Here we go, folks, LG's latest and greatest flagship phone. We don't have time for some crap unboxing because we gotta talk about the LG G4. No, really, I heard a kid watch an unboxing video while eating Pop Rocks and he died. Anywho, the G4 is a refined evolution over the G3. Walking around the hardware, the front face is dominated by the 5.5 inch quad HD display. That's 2560 by 1440 for folks who like numbers. All controls are software on screen, so we have no capacitive buttons, though we do have a little bit of a chin to mount the screen. Top of the front face has a very respectable 8 megapixel front facing camera capable of 1080p video. We've already shot a test of the front shooter which is linked in this video description. The top of the phone holds the IR blaster to use your phone as a universal remote and a mic for video and noise cancellation. The bottom of the phone has another microphone, a 3.5 millimeter headset jack and micro USB port. There are no things on either side of the phone because the back of an LG is where all the action happens. 16 megapixel camera with laser focus and hardware image stabilization capable of UHD video. The rear mounted power button flanked by volume keys and the bottom has the speaker, which you can hear in action on our separate speaker test video. We see a lot of the G3 DNA in the build and design with a few cues borrowed from the G Flex 2. The screen features a subtle curve and I prefer the more matte brushed appearance on the G4 than the glossy back plate on the Flex. Of course, this back is removable, granting us access to the SIM card, a micro SD card slot and the 3000 milliamp hour battery, all standard fare for LG. LG these days. It's yet another phone, the third iteration from LG, which artfully blurs the line between flagship and phablet. It's the same size screen as the display on the iPhone 6 Plus, but in a shell only slightly larger than the Galaxy S6. Like the G Flex 2, it's a nice little Time Lord trick. None of our flagship phones are terrifically great one-handed devices anymore, and the G4 does start to strain one thumb navigation, but curves, tapers, small bezels, and that matte finish help keep the phone in your hand. Of course, we don't have the leather version to test now, but if you like the G3, even the plastic version of the G4 feels nicer and more refined. LG made screen brightness one of the big selling points of the G4, dubbing their new panel IPS Quantum. It is brighter and more contrasty than the screen on the G3. It's brighter than the screen on the G Flex 2, though I do tend to prefer that OLED contrast. This screen gets LG a lot closer to the outdoor brightness modes found on Samsung and Lumia phones. It's a much nicer overall experience. It can still be a bit difficult using the camera camera in direct sun, however, as running the phone hard will often cause the screen to dim, which when shooting video is usually when you need that extra brightness to compose your shot. Performance is an interesting look at optimization over raw horsepower. The OctaCore Qualcomm 810 in the G Flex 2 has been criticized for running too hot and throttling performance. For the G4, LG opted for Qualcomm's 808 instead. It uses two big processor cores for heavy lifting and four little cores for tasks which require less horsepower. On the whole, this approach would seem to work. It's hard to see much difference between the G Flex 2 and the G4 in momentary interactions. The day-to-day -day stuff, checking a notification, replying to a text message. In prolonged use, however, screen on for longer than two minutes or so, like gaming or watching video. The G4 seems to get caught up less than its technically more powerful sibling. It runs cooler, so it can use the more powerful cores longer. I still stand behind my assessment on the G Flex 2 that thermal throttling doesn't affect daily smartphone usage that severely outside of long use scenarios like gaming and turn-by-turn -turn navigation, but the G4 performs the same in short interactions and handles hot situations noticeably better. Opposite phones like the Galaxy S6, I do see while gaming, like on Marvel Future Fight, missions load faster on the GS6, but overall performance is pretty similar and the G4 is able to hold its own on fluid gameplay. Overall UI performance is snappy enough, I can't recreate the same lags and stutters on Lollipop 5.1, which come very easily to the Galaxy S6 on Lollipop 5.0. You absolutely can tax this hardware, get it to hitch, redraw your home screens, multitasking stutters, that little Android jank we're noticing on all the newer flagships, but it's not as easy to demonstrate here. Hopefully that's a combo of the newer Android OS and LG's launcher. LG has made some interesting choices with their layout and design for the UX 4.0 skin. It continues to get simpler than where we were even on the G3, relying more on Lollipop for the pretty factor. But menus can have some odd type choices, like the scrolling titles in the settings menu. LG has found a style that brings some great customizations to Android without simply copying Samsung or HTC. Sliding to the left of your home screens brings a panel of quick access information, health info, calendar, a music player, TV remote, tips for using your phone, and a whole list of really clever smart settings. Smart toggle
toggle for wireless radios based on your location, sound profiles, and auto-starting your music app when headphones are plugged in or Bluetooth audio is activated. It's not as full-featured a side panel as the newsreader on the Galaxy S6, but it's also snappier sliding into and out of it. Most of these software mods are focused on streamlining the process of accessing simple services. There's a huge number of sliding options in the notification tray for toggling radios, writing a memo, or firing a flashlight. Q-Slide apps bring quick access to many floating apps like a calendar, phone dialer, or calculator. I'm a big fan of customizing the controls docked at the bottom of your screen, and I've really started to use the shortcut for dropping that notification shade. Plus, you just gotta love being able to split screen apps. I really wish Google would jump on making this a standard Android feature. Sliding down on the screen while it's off gives you a quick glance at the time and notifications. While the G4 obviously lacks a fingerprint scanner, knock codes provide a handy way of turning on your screen and unlocking your phone with a pattern you supply. Now, battery life has been a welcome improvement over using the Galaxy S6. Streaming a movie at 50% brightness over Wi-Fi resulted in about 7% battery loss, just a touch more drain than the G Flex 2, but I think the dimmer OLED display and lower resolution can account for that difference in power. I often had plenty of juice getting past dinner time on my fairly heavy social media usage. I could often almost double the amount of screen on time over the Galaxy S6, around four and a half hours. Not best in class to be sure, but an easy compromise to make for the brighter screen and more powerful camera. I'm not entirely sure if any of my chargers support the Qualcomm Quick Charge 2.0 spec, but oddly, the charger which ships with the G4 does not. On my Note 4 charger, I was able to juice about 30% over 25 minutes of charge time. Now, getting back to that camera, yup, it's good. Damn good. Really, utterly, properly damned good. We have a full review where you can see UHD video and stills, but touring the features here, we benefit from two major improvements. First, a larger sensor moves LG into the half-inch club, alongside Sony, Samsung, and Lumia. It's the single biggest request I've had of LG since the G2. This achieves wonderfully shallow depth of field in macro shots and fantastic low light performance when paired with the wide aperture on the lens. The camera app itself is the second major improvement. We now have three tiers of settings for users based on their experience. I kind of bristle when people say the iPhone has the most intuitive camera app as they've obviously never used LG simple mode. Literally nothing on the screen. Just tap and the phone will take a pic of what you tapped on. Stepping up to auto mode provides some basic controls over things like HDR and opens up the fun features like dual view and panorama mode. And then we move on to manual. Oh baby, full easily customizable controls over shutter, ISO, exposure value, white balance, and exposure lock and manual focus. From here, we can even shoot raw photos, pulling the unaltered data off the camera sensor directly and saving a file three times larger than the JPEG produced. Excellent tools for folks wanting to really dive into some editing. The hardware and software improvements here bring LG up to the premier league of smartphone photography and video. It's simply stellar performance. So where does that leave us with the LG G4? This is the phone for diehard Android fans. If you're into Android devices and appreciate features like swap batteries and micro SD card expansion, this is the phone to be. Compared to the rest of the Android ecosystem, there aren't any major compromises to make. Sure, the GS6 is a little snappier with in-game performance and has a more stable outdoor brightness mode. The HTC One has better speakers and a louder headphone jack, but the G4 best exemplifies the peak of Android versatility. Even outside of the diehard Android faithful, the G4 has a lot to offer smartphone users at all levels. Now, I just need to see if I can get my hands on one of those leather back plates. I'll of course leave some links down below this video for more info on the G4 and where you can shop this puppy online. As always folks, thanks so much for watching. Be sure to subscribe for more reviews like these and I would not be able to continue producing on this channel if you all weren't out there sharing my videos on Facebook and Twitter and Google Plus and the Reddit. So please keep bringing more cool people to the party. Hit that thumbs up button and I will catch you all on the next review.